welcome to another of Multilingua's free English lessons with me, Katie. And me, Brian. Today we're going to talk about a very difficult grammar point. Mm. I think that more than anything, it is considered to be quite difficult by a lot of people, but I think that it is used by a lot of people, mm. sometimes without them even realizing it. Mm. Let's, Let's chat about, about that. that. Hey Brian. Oh, hey Katie. What are you doing? I'm just having a look at the Guinness World Record book. Hey, did you know that the men's 100 meter record was broken in 2009 by Usain Bolt? Wow, and has it been broken since? Mm, no, I, I don't think so, but records are broken every year, aren't they? Mm, I guess you're right. Oh, did you hear about this new company that's producing these shoes to break the record again? Oh, really? Uh, no, I haven't, but, but do you think that's fair? I don't see why not. So I guess the record will be broken again. Mm, yeah, but that time of 9.58 seconds must be pretty hard to beat. Oh, definitely. So, as the title below suggests, today we're going to talk about the passive form in English. The dialogue that you've just listened to between Katie and myself had a lot of examples of passive voice. Have a look at this sentence that I wrote up here. This particular sentence is in the active form, not how we use it in the dialogue. Bolt broke the men's 100 meter record in 2009. This is how you would start it in the passive voice. Can you remember how we said this in the dialogue? You can pause the video and try to remember. Hey, did you know that the men's 100 meter record was broken in 2009 by Usain Bolt? Okay, good if you remembered. The men's 100 meter record was broken by Bolt in 2009. The men's 100 meter record was broken by Bolt in 2009. Now, a lot of you might be asking, but Brian, why can't we just say Bolt broke the record in 2009? There is nothing really wrong with that in all reality. So why do we use the passive? Let's talk a bit about Mr. Bolt for a second. Sometimes, Bolt is just not important. It doesn't matter that it was Bolt. It could be my father or your cousin, not Bolt. Which is why I've put Bolt in brackets. So what is important, if not Bolt? What's important is the fact that the record was broken. Okay, this is a very important event, a very important thing, and therefore the person is not so important. Sometimes, uh, the person who did it is not known. Maybe I don't know who Usain Bolt is, yes, but I know that the record was broken. So I might leave him out completely because I just don't know who he is. Um, in athletics, everybody, everybody knows Bolt. Everybody knows Usain Bolt. Everybody knows about the record. So because the person who did it is obvious, we might just say that the men's record was broken in 2009 and just leave the person out because it's obvious. So, to summarize the three functions of the passive, if the subject is not important, the subject is not known, or the subject is obvious, use the passive voice instead of the active form. Okay, now that we've understood why we use the passive, let's look at how we form the passive, because this is where students usually get quite confused. In simplicity, in the simplest way possible, the passive always needs two things. It's going to need a form of the verb to be and a past participle or the third form. For regular verbs, it's just the ED verb. For irregular verbs, you need to remember the third form. Okay, how do we form it? Very easy. Paul broke the men's 100 meter record in 2009. Okay, we're going to start with the record because the record is what's important. Now, what form of the verb to be do I use? Because this is where we get confused. Always think about the main verb in the active sentence. In this case, broke. What form of the verb is broke in? Good. Broke is the past simple form. Break, broke. So, the past form of to be was. Okay? And then the participle. The participle will never change. So, was broken, is broken, will be broken, no difference, always broken. Okay, now that we've looked at the past simple passive, let's look at some other forms that are commonly used for the passive. Have a look at this sentence here. Here's the active sentence again. 
Can you remember the passive sentence that we used in the video? Can you remember? No, I, I don't think so, but records are broken every year, aren't they? And you're correct again. Good. Records are broken every year. Once again, I did the exact same thing. I looked at the verb, the verb break. What form is the verb break in? Good, it's the present simple form. So, records are, so the present simple form of the verb to be, are broken every year. Hmm, a bit more challenging now. It's not a sentence, but it's a question. This is the active form of the question. Has anyone broken the record since? Can you remember the passive form that Katie used in the video? Wow, and has it been broken since? Mm. Oh wow, if you've remembered that one, you're really good, yeah? Has it been broken since? Has it been broken since? In the sentence form, it has been broken since 2009, or it hasn't been broken since 2009. Okay, so you got the past simple, you got the present simple, that was the present perfect. Now. Katie used the present continuous form, but she used the active form in the dialogue. Can you think of what the passive form of this might be? What is it? Oh, did you hear about this new company that's producing these shoes to break the record again? So, did you guess what that was? This one is a little bit tricky. We would say that new shoes are being produced. Yeah, the present continuous form can be a little bit tricky. Do be careful, since here we have the is form is but here we're using are because we're talking about the shoes not the company so make sure to change the verb accordingly hmm the last one a future form we're looking at the will future form can you remember how we expressed this active sentence in the passive earlier in the video can you remember i don't see why not so i guess the record will be broken again Okay, good. The record will be broken soon enough. So, we hope that you have now understood the passive a little bit better. Let us know in the comment section below. Leave us a sentence with a passive structure. And if you've got any questions, please let us know. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Share us with your friends. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for more brilliant videos like this one. So from me, Katie. Me, Brian. And our cameraman, Paul. Bye. Bye, guys.